God says, the earth is mine in the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. So the whole concept is, is to train up your children and discipline them so when they come to the place of age, there's nothing that they can't do. The mercy of God is released every time in the Bible when people are fasting. We become a team. We become a body of believers. If you get a breakthrough, she gets a breakthrough. I'll loose the gifts of healing where no cancerous cells shall ever be in my body. I loose the gifts of healing that drive out diabetes and any, any foreign sickness.
make that declaration of a celebration of the birth of our King Jesus here this morning. Amen. Come on, one more time. Just begin to bless him. Just begin to exalt him. this prayer with me say father in jesus name i open up my heart and my spirit to receive from you all that you have for me i declare there's an anointing upon me to walk in your will to fulfill your plan to be what you've called me to be in jesus name i declare you're touching every member of my family I declare you're drawing them unto yourself. I declare that your will is going to be accomplished in my family. In Jesus' name, stretch your hands out towards our city. Father, we bless our city today. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, Lord, that your spirit is moving in such a special way. And Lord, we pray, God, that there would be a manifestation of the glory of God that would invade our city. Lord, we pray today your spirit would move up and down every street, into every home, touching every family member. Lord, I pray hearts would be opened, blinders would be removed. Lord, I thank you that multitudes, Lord God, shall be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we pray for our mayor. We pray for Greg Fisher that you would touch his heart. May he walk in wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Lord, may he turn to the things of God in Jesus' name. We bless the leadership of our city. May there be righteousness, godliness, and morality. Lord, we bless those that serve, Lord, on the police force. And Lord, we pray that you would protect them. You would watch over them. You would keep them. You would preserve them. That destruction and devastation would stay away from them in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we bless our city city today may there be an open heaven may your blessings be upon our city in jesus mighty name and lord we bless our nation today we pray father god that you would touch our president barack obama that you would draw him unto yourself lord i pray that he would have a heart that's open and tender towards you may he turn to your word may he seek godly counsel in jesus mighty name lord we pray all across america there would be a great openness during this christmas season And Lord, I pray, God, that multitudes would come to the saving and redeeming knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Lord, we bless this nation today. And Lord, we bless Israel today. Lord, we pray for peace and we pray for protection. We pray that all of Israel would be saved. We loose the favor of God upon Israel. We boldly stand with Israel in Jesus' mighty name for the glory of God. Now lift your hands to the Lord. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, I receive an anointing upon me to be fruitful in the kingdom of God. May you give me a heart for the lost. May you put your words in my mouth that I can speak as your oracle. May this be the greatest season of soul winning that I've ever had in Jesus' name. May I speak words of peace, words of joy, words that build up, words that edify and words that strengthen for your glory in jesus mighty name now lay your hands on your heart now father in jesus name i loose an anointing of health and wellness and wholeness and strength i declare we're not going to be sickly weak or feeble but we're going to be strong healthy whole and well i declare cancer you're never coming into our bodies we're not going to have diabetes heart attacks strokes or aneurysms But as our days are, so shall our strength be. Lord, I declare energy, stamina, and endurance for the glory of God. We're going to run and not be weary. We're going to walk and not faint. We're not going to wear out. We're rejuvenating in the mighty name of Jesus for the glory of God. Lord, I loose that upon every single person here today. In Jesus' name.
Jesus' mighty name for the glory of God. Now let's pray the 23rd Psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy are following us everywhere we go. We're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty here today. Good things are happening to us because we serve a good God. Let's give Him one more round of a praise. Let's bless Him today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We're having a New Year's celebration service December 28th at 5 p.m. The night will feature our annual Parade of Ministries, a tag team preaching event, and more. Mark your calendars now for the last Sunday of 2014 to be at the Billtown Road location at 5 p.m. for the New Year's Eve celebration service. The loss of a loved one can be quite overwhelming, and many times details are overlooked or even forgotten. That's why here at Crosswater Gardens, we're offering a free, no obligation estate planning guide. This is a vital first step in keeping the wishes of your loved one in mind. And if you need help, one of our trained staff would love to speak with you and even walk you through the process. Because here at Crosswater Gardens, your legacy matters to us. Dr. Rogers has pioneered the fasting movement in the United States for the last 25 years. Fasting releases the mercy of God for God's blessings. Uh, the Lord said He would strengthen your body and He would heal your body and you would not be crippled through fasting. But I'm here to tell you, God will bring you miracles in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God is released every time in the Bible when people have fasted. We become a team. We become a body of believers. If you get a breakthrough, she gets a breakthrough. If you get a raise, that a blessing is for all of us. Now, for the first time ever, receive Dr. Rogers' most asked for fasting teachings in one DVD or CD package. This three disc set contains over 190 minutes of teaching, techniques and how to's to fasting. From three specific chosen sermons, what happens to people who fast, revelations through fasting and the key of David. This is the most comprehensive fasting disc set ever released from Bob Rogers Ministries. Receive A Legacy of Fasting, 25 years of fasting and prayer by Dr. Rogers on DVD or CD for your gift of any amount to the ministry. Call 1-888-613-6080 or visit us online at bobrogersministries.org. Plus, call before this program ends and receive a special gift from Dr. Rogers, his best-selling book, America Fasting for Revival. This offer is by far the greatest set of fasting materials you can ever obtain and is only available for a short time. Call today and help support the outreach of Bob Rogers Ministries with your best one-time gift to the ministry. In the days of the coming of Christ, people had a very austere opinion of God. It was almost like God was waiting for someone to fail so he could punish them. And so when Jesus came, he came to really show what God was like. He came and he was not against any color of people, against any nationality. The fact is he was for people. He was for you. He was for me. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. The Bible says Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus came and he was against four things. Number one, he was against sickness because sickness destroys your body like sin destroys your soul. He was against poverty 
because it deprives a person of their dreams and their goals. Thirdly, he was against demon oppression and possession because a person takes upon the characteristics of those demons. And then, fourthly, he was against sin because sin perverts a person's life and they never fulfill what God has ordained them to be. When I say Jesus came to heal the sick, it's amazing about what happened when Jesus came. Until that time, the longevity of man during the Roman Empire was between 45 and 50 years of age. There were people who lived longer, but it took almost four children to be born for a child to reach a, teenage, a teenager. And so when you were 45 or 50 years of age, it would be like you were 80 years of age today. But when Jesus began to come and he began to preach healing and the miracles of healing began to happen through the early church, it's an amazing thing how people begin to live longer. The fact is in the first in the first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 6, I want to read, it says, After that he appeared unto more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living today, though some have fallen asleep. This is a scripture that Paul wrote about there were 500 people that saw Jesus resurrected, and now he rose from the dead. That was in 33 A.D., and yet, this Bible was written in Corinthians at 55 A.D. It was written 22 years later. And so if the average age was, say, 20, and probably there were some 30, some 40, there, that would make them 20 years older. So the people, those 500 people almost that were still living, they were the youngest would have to be at really the age of dying, the average age in the Roman Empire. But yet, there were some that were in their 60s, some that were even in their 70s. It seems like they were living longer because Jesus was healing the sick and prolonging life. The Gospel of John was written in 90 AD. That's almost 57 years after the death of Christ. And it begins, this was written through live witnesses who witnessed what Jesus had done. So those people had to be in their 80s and some even in their 90s. But it shows how when Jesus comes, there's a healing and a strength that begins to take place. In the book of Proverbs chapter 12 verse 28, it says, In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. The Hebrew translation for that, and the way of righteousness in helping the poor, there is life, and in the pathway thereof, there is no death. One of the pillars of Jesus' teaching was to help the poor. And the Bible teaches us that we have an appointed lifespan. We have a day to die. Everybody is given a lifespan some longer than others. But if you help the poor, if you reach out to those in need, you will not die before your time. And you have an opportunity to live even longer. And then your reaching out to the poor gives you a reward on the other side. So there is no death. It just doesn't come to an end after you pass from this life but that goes on and blesses you even in the life after this. I remember when I was a senior in high school, I had broken my arm playing football. I had broken the socket off my arm and my arm quit growing. I was in the hospital for 45 days my senior year and the doctor told me I would have a withered arm. But a preacher came into my room. He was a Baptist preacher that had been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and he said, God has sent me here to pray the prayer of faith that you might be healed. God healed my arm. I don't have a withered arm. I have a whole arm that's totally healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
So Jesus, he came here to heal the sick. Secondly, he came that we might have life, the life of God. You see, when you get born again, it's not just a get out of hell free card. It's not just so you don't can go to heaven, but he imparts to us his very nature, his, the life of God. It's like having a pit bull and suddenly it becomes like a kitty cat. It's like having a ferocious lion and suddenly it becomes like a pet that you'd have around your home. That's what God does when he comes into a person's life and it's called the Zoe. Say that with me, the Zoe or the life of God. And what happens when that life of God comes inside of you, it's a fullness of the Logos that becomes manifest in your flesh. Anything that God says becomes alive inside of you so you're able to love like God loves. You're able to forgive people who've treated you wrong. You're able to do things and have faith to believe God to remove mountains in your life. It's called the Zoe or the life of Jesus Christ. That word Zoe is mentioned in the New Testament 127 times, but it's mentioned most 32 times in the book of John. And when you begin to read it, it says, in him was life. And in that life was the life of men. In John 3, 15 and 16, it says, whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him would not perish, but have the life of God. In John 6, 33, it says, For the bread of life is he that cometh down from, from heaven and giveth life unto the world. John 10, 10 says, The thief or the devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life. You might have the life of God inside of you. And you might have it more abundantly. So Jesus came that he might give us his nature in his peace. You know, when you come to Christmas, a lot of times the biggest fights that ever take place, take place on Christmas Day. Alcohol has done more to destroy Christmases, birthdays, the 4th of July's, birthday parties, alcohol has destroyed the joy and the peace of God. And when we talk about God's peace and God's life, it comes through Jesus Christ. Christmas is about Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. Thirdly, Jesus came to destroy the demon activity and demon possession. When you read in the eighth chapter of the book of Luke. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. He was leaving over where Capernaum was, where he lived, and he was going to cross over the Sea of Galilee to where Syria is today, there at the foot of the Golan Heights. And as they were crossing over, the demons in the Golan Heights, the demons in Gesserit, they knew he was coming, so they caused a great storm. And as Jesus was asleep in the boat, the disciples thought that the boat literally was going to sink. So they woke Jesus up and they said, don't you care that we perish? And the Bible says, he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And then the Bible says immediately, they were at the other side of the lake. And there came a man full of demons. He had a legion of demons. That was like a Roman uh, battalion of demons inside of him. In the book of Luke, I want to read, it says, Now there was a herd of many swine feeding there in the mountain. And the demons implored him to permit them to enter the swine. And he gave them permission. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked to death. Those demons, those demons in that man legion, they knew Jesus was coming to get them. 
And so they rose up and they tried to destroy Christ. You know, that's what happens to many of you. The de devil knows that God's getting ready to do something great. And so he tries to destroy your life. He tries to bring sickness. He tries to bring confusion. Sometimes on your way to church, some of the worst arguments and troubles happens in families on the way to God's house. Then you have to put on your church face when you come in here and have to listen to Pastor Bob and you just smile, but in relief, you've had the biggest knockdown drag out that you've had all week. Well, that's the devil trying to hold you back from receiving what God has for you. But Jesus came to break every fetter of the devil off of you and your family. Can I hear an amen? I remember Margaret and I were on the evangelistic field. We were staying with a pastor. And this uh, pastor's son had married a girl who absolutely was demonic. Her, her parents had been in witchcraft. And he thought she was the most beautiful girl in the world when really she looked like a devil to me. She looked like that Corilla DeVille in the 101 Dalmatian story. I mean, it, he might have looked, she might have looked good to him, but she didn't look good to anybody else. And he became so oppressed with demons that he was uh, at the place of suicide. And so the mother asked me to go over there and talk to him. And I went into the place where he was working. He was running a radiator shop. And I remember as I began to talk to him, these demons began to manifest. And he said, I'm going to kill you. And it's actually the demons speaking out of him. And he picked me up. He picked me off my feet and, and put me against the wall. And he said, I'm going, to, I'm going to run my fist right through you. And I said, I said no, you're, you're not going to run your fist through me. And he took his fist and wham. And he hit the wall right beside me. He knocked a big hole in the wall. And then he picked up a chair and he said, I'm going to break this chair over your head. And I said, no, you're not going to break that chair over my head. I've learned that every word the devil speaks a lie. So if you'll just say the opposite, that's a, that will be the truth. If the devil says he's going to bring cancer, said, no, you're not going to bring cancer in my life. I'm going to bring divorce. No, you're not going to bring divorce in my life. And he took that chair and he raised it. And at the last second, he hit the floor beside me and it broke into, into many pieces. I said, Steve, God wants to deliver you. And I laid my hands on him and he fell to his knees and God totally set him free in Jesus' name. Jesus came to set the captives free. Can I hear an amen? The fourth thing that Jesus came, he came that we might prosper and be blessed. Beloved, I would above all things that thou wouldest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I know the world gets all upset when the preacher gets up and talks about how God wants to bless his people and how God wants to prosper you. But let them just, just choke on, on that for a little bit. When it comes to the very facts, everywhere where the gospel is preached, people begin to prosper. There's never been a man of God in the Bible that did not increase and be blessed in Jesus' name. Jesus came that we might prosper spiritually, prosper physically, and prosper financially. And Jesus even blesses those who don't even believe on his name. Now you take right now, this is the Christmas season. Let me tell you about the Christmas season. Christmas is typically the largest economic stimulus that the whole world will receive. Here in the United States in 2013, there were over three trillion U.S. dollars spent during the holiday season. This year, there have been over 800,000 people that have been employed just because of Christmas. And so even those who reject Jesus are being blessed by Jesus during this time. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big praise clap. To deny Christ's blessings is to deny the Bible. 700 times he speaks about money. 2,000 times he speaks about money or what money can do. 
In Deuteronomy 8, 18, he says he'll give you power to make wealth. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, he says, It is written and the word is given that thou may be prosperous and have good success. In Genesis 12, 13, 2, it says that he, we would be blessed. I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. In Job 22, 28, it says, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. In Psalms chapter 1, it says that you shall bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. In Matthew 21, 22, it says all things. Somebody say all things. All things, all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer believing, ye shall receive. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. In Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. In John 14, 13, whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will he do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that today? If you do, say an amen. Years ago, we were struggling. We were struggling with the television station. It was very difficult that year. Over 200 television stations, Christian stations, went under. But there was a man that literally God raised up. His name was Bud Paxton. I don't know if many of you really recognize that name, but he founded the Home Shopping Network. He uh, had a little... Uh, uh, AM radio station and there was um, a fellow who owed him money an appliance store that didn't pay him and so in lieu of a payment he gave him 118 can openers uh, that were worth the uh, $30 per can open, opener well he couldn't even make payroll so he got on the radio and he said if you'll come in I'll give you one of these $30 electric can openers for $10 and within a few hours, all of those can openers were sold. Well, he eventually began to sell other things on the radio. And then he leased a cable network. And he started selling there in Florida off of the cable station. And uh, people made fun of him. But that year, he made $12 million. And then it began to expand and uh, it uh, began to bring in up to $1 billion in gross sales a year, $1 billion. So he began to travel, and he came here to Louisville, and uh, we did a contract with him to have home shopping on uh, the television station. And it was a great blessing to the station. Well, he traveled so much that he came home at Christmas time. And his wife told him she wanted a divorce. She had fallen in love with someone else, and it almost destroyed his life. They had planned a vacation at Christmas time to go to Las Vegas. So his children went with him. His wife stayed at home. And while they were in the penthouse of one of the large hotels, there was a Gideon Bible. And he got the Gideon Bible out, and he read in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God commended his love that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Verse 19 goes on. It says, by a man's disobedience, the world became sinners. But by a man's obedience, we became the righteousness of God. And he gave his heart to Christ. He found a pastor. And out of that, he started what was called the worship network that would come on at night on hundreds of television stations, and it would just play gospel music and worship music. And so he called me, and he says, uh, Brother Bob, I want to buy Channel 21. And I, I said, well, it's not for sale. He said, I'll give you $5 million for Channel 21. And then he wrote me a letter and said, I'll give you $8 million for Channel 21. 
And uh, I said, no, we don't want to sell it. And then he invited me to come to Las Vegas. I remember I went out to Las Vegas and he was staying at the penthouse at the Bellagio Hotel. And I put on my best suit. I went over there and I had, I paid the fellow to shine my shoes because I wanted to look really good to meet Bud Paxton. When I got up there at the penthouse, he answered the door and he didn't even have any shoes on. He, he uh, had a t-shirt on and a, a pair of pants and he sat down and he, he told me how he had accepted Christ and how he wanted to buy our station. And he said, I'll give you $30 million for Channel 21. And I told him, I said, well, I, I can't sell it. He said, well, I thought you, uh, you were the, uh, the person who was uh, the decision maker. I said, well, you don't understand. I don't own it. It belongs to Jesus. Jesus owns Channel 21. And as I talked with him, he said, all right. He said, I want to do a deal with you. And, and PAX Network did a deal with our station that was never done with any other station. And they had bought 83 television stations. And they did a deal for us. He said, I'm going to buy you a new transmitter. It was $5 million for the transmitter. He said, I'm going to put a completely new uh, outfit, your, your television station. We had the best master control, better than WHAS, better than Wave TV. It was the best in this state. Then he began to pay us. And for 15 years, we had the highest pay of any station he would pay to us when station after station was going off the air Praise God, God made a way for us. Come on, let's give the Lord a big praise clap. Hallelujah. I remember he sent a manager that ran the station. We had leased a, a portion of the time, which is now I on television. And it came to my knowledge that the manager there was a homosexual. And... I, I was greatly disturbed, and I called uh, Bud Paxton on the phone. He was in Florida, and I said, uh, Bud, I said, you know, the fellow here is uh, an avowed homosexual, and we're a Christian station. And I'm a pastor of a church. And uh, he says, well, I understand. He said, let me just work this all out. And he called me the next day, and he said, Brother Bob, says if we get rid of him, they'll end up owning... Uh, PAX Network and your station too. And so he said, you're going to have to work this out yourself. You're going to have to pray about this. And I did, and God spoke to me. And I went over to the TV station. I met with uh, this man, and I began to talk to him and began to talk to him about the Lord. And he told me how he really wanted to serve God. But this was something that was very difficult for him to get over. He had believed a lie that he was born that way. And I said to him, I said, look, I'm going to be your friend and I'm going to pray for you. And he says, well, Pastor Bob, he said, I want to be your friend and I'm going to help you. And he did. Later, he moved on to another network and he continually helped our station. And one of the reasons our station has been blessed literally was the help from this man. I've had people over the years because I have stood and I've preached against homosexuality as a sin that would send you to hell. And they've called me homophobic. But I've helped more people bound by homosexuality to get free than anybody I know of. We don't hate anybody. But there are people that are bound, but Jesus can set them free. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. So what we talk about is Jesus. Christmas is about Jesus. What would happen if Jesus had never been born? Let me tell you what would happen. There would never have been a human rights uh, movement. It exclusively came from the biblical idea that all people are created in the image of God. Women would still be treated as slaves. In ancient culture, a wife was the property of her husband. Aristotle, he wrote that a woman was somewhere between a free man and a slave. Christianity, in a time when a widow, if they did not marry within two years, 
they were put into slavery. Christianity was the first religion not to force widows to marry. Christians did not believe in cohabitation. And if a Christian man wanted to live with a woman, then he had to marry her. And this gave woman value and gave her security. What would happen if Jesus had not have come? Our children, our children would not have a life of protection in Rome and in Greece alike. Infanticide, killing children, was uh, not only legal, it was applauded. It was something that the Romans said was an act of beauty. But Christianity has elevated the position of a child and protected them. Slavery, even though Christians have owned slaves over the years, when the abolitionist movement society was started here in America, two-thirds of the members of that society were Christian members that preached against slavery. Gladiators, that stopped because of the church. Cannibalism was stopped because missionaries went all over the world and they preached against it. When we talk about compassion and mercy, and you talk about agencies that reach out to help the needy, it is not totally Christian, but the majority and the major institutions that have helped mankind have been born out of the gospel of Jesus. What do you think the Red Cross stands for? Come on, wake up in the name of Jesus. The Red Cross is the blood of Jesus. It's the cross of Christ in the name of the Lord. When you look at Mother Teresa, the Salvation Army, the religious hospitals, the finest hospitals in the world are, are St. George's, St. Joseph, St. something else in the name of the Lord, the Methodist Hospital, the Presbyterian Hospital. The message of Jesus has reached out in a compassionate way to the world. When you talk about the soup kitchens, listen, the soup kitchens in this city, every one of them was born out of the message of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You look at marriage. You look at marriage. Did you know it was, it was legal to be a pedophile and to be a homosexual uh, sexuality and being a pedophile was never considered wrong until Jesus came and the gospel went forth. And it began to proclaim the sanctity of marriage and lifted up the family. When you talk about education, when the gospel began to be preached by Martin Luther, the just shall live by faith. The, 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 the world was taught the Bible is something that you cannot understand. You have to have people trained to even read the Bible. But Martin Luther said it's so simple that even a child can understand it. And education began to come forth so people could read the Word of God. The finest schools today are Christian schools. Look at the high schools in this city. What high schools produce the finest students? It's St. X. It's Trinity. It is the, the schools that are established by Christian organizations. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Um, America, when you look at our Constitution and our government, even though it's not specifically Christian, it can be argued that the roots were taken out of biblical doctrines. Of the 55 signers of the Constitution of the United States, 50 were born-again Orthodox Christians. And there's no doubt that the concept of our constitutional checks and balances of the judicial system, the Congress, and the presidency came out of the whole biblical concept that man has a root of sin within him. And so a man would rise to power and he would want to, to, to get control. So there had to be a checks and balance put into place to hold man into accountability. It came from the biblical concept of the Word of God. When we talk about the science, science is not an enemy of the Bible. The fact is, when you look at the outstanding scientists and people that were leaders in science, Le Pasteur, uh, uh, Newton, uh, Boyle, all of these were 
were men of God and Christian men. When you talk about the free enterprise and work, worth ethic, private property rights originated with the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. When we talk about biblical capitalism, it is what has made this country great, and it was born out of the word of God. He that has, even more will be given unto him, and that person who does not produce, even what he has will be taken away. When you talk about art and music and literature, think about it. Think about it. Had Jesus never been born, music would not sound like it does today. Where did Bach and, and uh, Handel's and other uh, um, musicians come from? It came, and the inspiration came from the Word of God. What I'm talking about is Jesus. He has affected every aspect of our society. And you take Jesus out of the equation. You take the church out of the equation. And what do we have? We have a lawless society. You have Hitler. You have Mao Zedong killing millions of people. You have Stalin killing 18 million people on the earth. Oh, I've heard people talk about the Crusades and how the Crusades were, were so evil. Well, what about terrorism? What about terrorism in the United States where we've had to go and protect ourselves and we've had to go to Afghanistan? It was the same thing with the Crusaders. They were being plundered. The holy sites were being destroyed. They had to rise up and defend themselves. I'm here to, to say without Jesus, where would we be? All through the word of God, it's the story of Jesus. From Genesis to Revelation, it's Jesus. In Genesis, he was the seed of woman. In Exodus, he was the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he was our high priest. In Numbers, he was a cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he was a prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he was the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he became our eternal judge. In Ruth, he was our kinsman redeemer. In the book of Samuel, he was our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he was our reigning king. In Ezra, he was our faithful scribe. In Nehemiah, he was the rebuilder of our broken down lives. In the book of Esther, he was our Mordecai. Who is this man? He's Jesus. When you read the book of Job, he's a loyal servant that though God slay me, yet will I trust him. In Psalms, he's the great shepherd that leads us beside the still waters, and he restoreth our soul. When you read Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he's the wisdom of God. In Song of Solomon, he's our lover and our bridegroom. In Isaiah, he's the prince of peace. In Jeremiah and in Lamentations, he's the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he becomes the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And in Daniel, he's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's the husband forever married to the backslider. In Joel, Joel, he's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. In Amos, he's our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is our loving Lord. In Jonah, he's the first foreign missionary that goes to the ends of the earth to proclaim the good news. In Obadiah, he is the Lord mighty to save. In the book of Micah, he is the redeeming Lord. In the book of Nahum, he's the avenger. In Habakkuk, he's the evangelist forever pleading for revival. In Zephaniah, he is the, the one who comes with beautiful feet. In, in the book of Haggai, he's the restorer of a lost heritage. In Zechariah, he's a fountain flowing for the sin and the unclean of mankind. And in Malachi, he is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings hallelujah to jesus i'm talking about jesus say say it with me jesus christmas is about jesus in matthew he's the messiah and mark he's the miracle worker and luke he's the son of man and john he's the son of god in the book of of acts he's the holy spirit working through people like you and like me in romans he's the justifier declaring you're no longer guilty of your sins 
In Corinthians, he's the sanctifier. In the book of Galatians, he's the fruit of the Spirit that will help you to love and have peace in your life. In the book of Ephesians, he's the armor of our salvation that helps us to rise up against every attack of the enemy. In Philippians, he's our God that will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. In Colossians, he's the fullness of the Godhead. In Thessalonians, he's our soon coming king. In Timothy, he's our go-between. In Titus, he's our pastor. In Philemon, he's a friend to the downtrodden and to the oppressed. In the book of Hebrews, he's our faith. In the book of, of James, he's the great physician who's able to heal you today and able to set you free for the glory of God. In Peter, he's the rock of our salvation. In John, he is love. In Jude, he's coming with 10,000 of his saints. And in the book of Revelations, he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. And he's the ending in Jesus' name. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. I want everyone to stand. If you're here today and you need a miracle, you need a physical healing in Jesus' name, Jesus is your healer. I want you to place your hand on that part of your body where you need God to heal you. In Jesus' name, I command every sickness, every infirmity, every weakness to come out of your body in the name of Jesus. I command you to be healed from your head down to your toes. I speak to your lungs, to your heart. I speak to the joints. I speak to your back. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I come against demon oppression and demon possession. If you have members of your family that are bound by drugs or alcohol, I'm here to tell you God can set them free in the name of Jesus. I bind those demons. Come out in the name of the Lord. I come against generational curses that have brought nervous conditions and all type of curses on your life. I break those curses in the name of Jesus. Be set free for the glory of God. Now everyone raise your right hand. I speak blessings to you. I command poverty to be broken. Lack to come off of you in Jesus' name. May God do miracles for you financially. May the blessings of God come upon you. May it overtake you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now every head bowed, every eye closed. I can share with you about Jesus. And if you've come here today and he's not the Lord of your life, You'll leave here and you'll say, well, that's a good thought. But unless the Holy Spirit convicts you, and unless you open yourself up to the words of Christ to do what Jesus has called you to do, unless there's a fear of God within you, you'll reject Jesus and you'll go to hell. Hell's a real place. Hell is something that preachers don't like to preach on a lot, but hell is made for the devil and those who will not serve God. Jesus doesn't want you to go to hell. He came and died so you would not have to go to hell. But you have to accept Christ. You have to open up your life and say, Jesus, I want you to live inside of me. And if you'll do that, everything will begin to change. With every head bowed, nobody looking, how many are here and say, Pastor, things are not right between me and the Lord. I don't know if I'd go to heaven or not, but I want to know. I want to give my life to God and I believe in your prayers. Would you pray for me? Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. I want to pray for you. Yes. Yes. God bless you. Are there others? Yes. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. God bless you. Are there others? Slip your hand up high in the name of Jesus. I want everyone to join hands with people on either side of you. And I want us all to pray this prayer together. So Lord Jesus, as best I know how, I mean this prayer today. I ask you to forgive me of every sin. Take out of me what the devil's put in my life and restore to me what the devil's stolen. In Jesus' name, I want to serve you. Let this be a great Christmas. May I sense your presence. Jesus, be real to me. 
be real in my family. Heal every situation. I give myself to you forever. Amen. How many meant that prayer? Hold your hand up if you meant that prayer. Come on, hold your hand up high if you meant that prayer. Then God heard that prayer. And God will answer that prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap today. Hallelujah. Dr. Rogers has pioneered the fasting movement in the United States for the last 25 years. Fasting releases the mercy of God for God's blessings. Uh, the Lord said He would strengthen your body and He would heal your body and you would not be crippled through fasting. But I'm here to tell you, God will bring you miracles in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God is released every time in the Bible when people have fasted. We become a team. We become a body of believers. If you get a breakthrough, she gets a breakthrough. If you get a raise, that a blessing is for all of us. Now, for the first time ever, receive Dr. Rogers' most asked for fasting teachings in one DVD or CD package. This three disc set contains over 190 minutes of teaching, techniques and how to's to fasting from three specific chosen sermons, what happens to people who fast, revelations through fasting, and the key of David. This is the most comprehensive fasting disc set ever released from Bob Rogers Ministries. Receive A Legacy of Fasting, 25 years of fasting and prayer by Dr. Rogers on DVD or CD for your gift of any amount to the ministry. Call 1-888-613-6080 or visit us online at bobrogersministries.org. Plus, call before this program ends and receive a special gift from Dr. Rogers, his best-selling book, America Fasting for Revival. This offer is by far the greatest set of fasting materials you can ever obtain and is only available for a short time. Call today and help support the outreach of Bob Rogers Ministries with your best one-time gift to the ministry. 1-888-613-6080. 